And welcome our guests. Welcome to our meeting. Um, are there agenda revisions? Public comments. You guys want to say anything? Uh, yeah. Um, I th uh, we're here for uh, talk about Black Lives Matter flag and how we collectively want an All Lives Matter flag put, put up. Will you introduce yourself? Oh, oh sorry. I'm <laughs> Carter Pelzel. I'm Tony Rao. And I'm Isabella Skelton. Do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Christopher Meyer. I'm just here to support. We're also here for the Black Lives Matter flag. So this is a time to make comments. We are also going to discuss our, um, what do we call it, diversity, inclusion, and equity belief statement a little, just a little bit later on in our agenda. Um, but if you want to make a statement now, now's the time to make it. Usually the board accepts those statements. We don't usually converse back and forth at this time when we have board comments. I have one question before we start. What if all the other tables all go to this school? Why wouldn't all this be done all together at once so that everybody's on the same page and that you all don't make the decision for all the other districts? I'm not sure. Are you talking about the diversity? We introduced it tonight to so all the boards there. You're referring to the, the flag decision. So you introduced the I, flag to all the boards? I'm not sure what you're talking about. I think he's asking why why we made the decision about the flag Is that and not and didn't involve the other boards in that decision. Yeah. And I, Is I, that I, what you're asking? I guess I just assume that all the other tables, you know, that do go to U32 would be involved in this whole discussion. Those are there's six. There are actually seven different boards. Each elementary school has a school board. U32 has a school board, and the meeting that was in there is the full board, so it's all the boards together. So there's business that each individual school does, and then there's business that we do together as a full board, it's called. I, and that, I understand, but am I wrong, but didn't you all sit at the same table and not at each one of you at every other table? All the kids from each one of those tables go to their school, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so eventually, like eventually. eventually. Correct, but you're taking the information for this district and going to your table, just like when the gentleman said, stood up and said, I believe that everything is uh, in disagreement and that we're all done with this. And then the lady stood in the back and said, Well, no, we're not all for this. You know, if you're not all on the same page and all at the same meeting, how do you get anywhere? So I'm going to back up for a second. This is time for board comment. I'm not inviting you to make a comment. We're not going to engage in discussion right now. Later on, we have on our agenda the diversity policy, and so we can talk about it then. We've had three or four meetings that were warned. They've been um, videotaped so that the public can see the conversation that we've had, the discussion, the things that we've wrestled with over the last two months, three months? Couple months. Maybe even more than that. So I'm going to welcome you guys to make a comment, and then we'll go on with our agenda. And I don't know, did you want to start, Carter? Okay, like, uh, what, what would a comment look like? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Just like saying, like, why we're here. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Oh, okay. okay. so and yeah. it's not, why, it's not an engaged what you, what you conversation. Think. It's okay. not a question and answer time. Okay. It's a comment. All right, exactly. yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I'm here uh, to talk about the political nature of the BLM flag and how schools should be neutral. Um, yeah, basically, okay, so I just wrote, can I have a short paragraph. I said, we are here today hoping you will hear us out in raising an All Lives Matter flag. We think it's important to work together and unite to end racism. Instead of picking out one race and just helping one, we can help all. Every single race has to deal with racism. Racism is awful and so wrong, but sadly still exists today. If we can stop segregation and stop racism, we all need to work together. This is why we feel we should raise an All Lives Matter flag. This brings everyone together and brings awareness to every race that experiences it. 
Um, my comment is, I just feel like uh, since the flag has been raised, that it's put our school into more of a divide than it was before we raised that flag. And that's all I really want to say. Did you want to make a comment? I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Tim Frazier. Tim Frazier. My wife, Jen, I'm sorry. I get too worked up. I think it's, this is my belief and that's fine. And I believe kids don't make the decisions. They don't pay the taxes and they're not 18. So I don't understand how you could make a decision on this when it didn't go out to people that pay taxes in the school. Um, as a business owner, I go to a lot of places and the veterans are disgusted. Um, I hear lots and lots of stuff. If you want to put the any flag you want on a million poles out there, then so be it. But we all, everybody fights to be here or whatever it is, and nothing should have been on the American flag pole. And it disgusts me. If my father was here after fighting and everything, he'd be disgusted. Now my wife would like to talk, please. <laughs> My name is Diane Fraser. Um, the only way that I could explain how this flag has affected my family is by giving you a timeline of events. So bear with me, please. Um, it's going to start with the week of May 22nd. Um, my son was in a full class discussion on raising the BLM flag at the school. Um, when my child voiced his concerns about why he felt the flag should not be raised, his teacher kicked him out of the classroom um, for not having the same beliefs as her. He did not, um, we did not find out about this incident until we received an email from the school and the school board on the 28th stating when the flag was going to be raised. We asked our son if he knew about it and that's when he explained to us what, that he had been kicked out of the class. So May 29th, um, Tim and I went to Washington Central Supervisory Union to meet or to schedule a meeting with Bill Kimball so that we could discuss our, dis our concerns with the BLM flag and the lack of support that our child received at school. We were told that they could not help us, that we had to go to the school and talk to the principals. Um, so we went over to the school and asked if we could be seen and um, Jody did sit down with us and later in our conversation, Stephen um, joined in. We voiced our concerns about raising the flag with them and how our son had been kicked out of class and we were told that that teacher had been spoken to about it. Um, to our knowledge, she was not asked to apologize to our son and to her class for her behavior. She should have, been, have remained neutral that day instead of allowing her feelings and her beliefs to control her and my son was publicly shamed for his thoughts and feelings. Um, they assured us that our child would be safe on the flag raising day and every day. So we jump to June 1st. Um, my son is sitting at a table in the cafeteria with his friends listening to music from someone at the table's playlist on, through a portable um, Bluetooth speaker. My son was video recorded without his knowledge or consent singing in the song playing with the N word in it um, and other not so nice words. Um, the person then proceeds to send this video through Snapchat to multiple people in the school. Um, I'm gonna call this next person student A. It's one of the students that was shown this video and goes to the cafeteria and proceeds to yell at my son, calling him a redneck, ignorant white, and white trash. Leaves, comes back 20-ish minutes later to continue to yell, harass, and verbally, verbally excuse me, attack my son before going to the principal's office. My son is brought in to see Jody and receives a harassment charge on his school record and gets a two-day out-of-school suspension effective immediately. When we found out about this, we asked to talk to Jody and scheduled the time to meet because it was in the evening um, on Monday morning, June 4th. So June 4th, we meet with Jody. She explained the incident to us and what was on the video. We talked about how our child was now being harassed, bullied, and stereotyped because of someone else's behavior or actions. She told us that the student that took and sent the video had been reprimanded. She couldn't tell us what, 
you know, what it was, and we completely understand. We asked her if student A was disciplined for harassing and bullying our son, and we were told that they had to look at the video again to see what actions needed to be taken. We again talked about the safety of our son and were told that he would be safe. We told Jody that we were going to tell our son to see her if he had any problems at school when he went back the next day, because he was out of school on suspension. So June 5th, our son didn't want to go to school because he didn't feel safe. We stressed the importance of him finishing out his school year, to hold his head up high and to keep his mouth closed and not to ruin his chances on going to the tech center at Spalding next year. He agreed to go and we told him um, if anything was said to him that made him feel unsafe to go see Jody. Well, something happened and he did not go to Jody. Instead, he tells me after school that student A walked up to him first period while he was sitting at a table again with his friends, minding his own business, and tried to start a fight with him, yelling at him, do you want to start shit again? And again, my son asked her to go away. When she continued to yell at him, the other students at the table told her to go away. So student A claims that she founded the multicultural group LAM, in a, her quote, in an effort to stimulate a conversation about racism and intolerance, and states, this flag to me represents equality, inclusiveness, and most of all hope. Hope that in the future, not just this school, but the nation will learn the beauty of differences and importance of change. And that the racism needs to stop, the police brutality needs to stop, the stereotyping needs to stop, and most of all, the oppression needs to come to an end. So, in her theory, the flag equals equality, inclusiveness, and hope. And she feels that by raising this flag, racism, stereotyping, and oppression will stop. Everything she says BLAM and BLM flag stands for is the opposite of her actions. She is showing herself as superior, verbally attacking, harassing, bullying my son, all because she was not reprimanded or punished for her actions back on June 1st. And to my knowledge, has not been at all. Um, the school told us they would keep my child safe through all of this and have repeatedly failed. How do you tell your child that he is safe at school and that the school supports him and his views when they are not treating him as an equal to his peers, all because of a flag that was supposed to help with just that, equality, inclusiveness, and hope? I agree that the issues this flag has raised are bigger than all of us. I am not sure what the answer is, but I feel that something that is as important as this should have been put to a ballot or a vote for the community, not the school board to decide. This BLAM group said that they did not feel the support of our whole community, then the whole community should have been given that chance. Thank you. So, I do have a comment. I just, you know, I, I hear the same thing coming from Isabella when she's in class and there's a discussion about the Black Lives Matter flag or any kind of, uh, you know, going along with that, and she, Isabella gets bombarded by all the other, other students. Um, and I haven't heard this once, I've heard this twice, I've heard this multiple times. Um, these kids, they cannot go ahead and speak their mind and how they feel without feeling, without getting repercussions from these other students because, and, okay, Sorry. no, that's fine. Sorry. And you know, uh, you know, for what they believe, it seems like, you know, if they don't believe the way the majority does, they're the outcasts, you know, and, and I keep hearing about that. And, and, and it's tough, you know, I, myself, I don't understand why the Black Lives Matter, you know, flag got raised like that. And what, I, I didn't know that um, schools were able to go ahead and support an activist group like that, an activist group, you know, that'll go ahead and, uh, you know, chant down the road, uh, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, um, go ahead and um, block interstates. Um, and when police come to go ahead and try to get them off the interstates, they go ahead and throw rocks and bottles and other objects at the police. 
I mean, they're, I, I'm not saying they're all like that, but this has all happened, you know, because of this Black Lives Matter protest. And I just had no idea that schools are able to go ahead and we're allowed to go ahead and fly something like that in support of a protest group. Um, and, you know, from, from what I understand, you know, from what I hear from the kids and, you know, from you guys too, it, it's creating a huge divide in the school, you know, and it shouldn't be like that. You know, I remember when I was in high school, I mean, that was the last thing, you know, we ever talked about or even thought about with things like that. We we're all like, you know, hanging out, going to school, doing our thing, you know, and I mean, just the issues that come up in schools nowadays, I just don't get it. I mean, the kids should be able to, you know, be able to come to school and have fun and be able to go and speak their minds about certain things without having any kind of backlash. You know, I, I, I just, I don't understand. And, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from. Nothing else should be going up on that flagpole. The only thing that I would see that should be going up on that flagpole is POW MIA flag. You know, um, I, I just, it, it's, it's tough. And, you know, and, and there's a lot of other, you know, if you don't mind me saying, there, there's a lot of other students that feel the same way that these three of you right here, but some couldn't come for other reasons, family reasons, but some didn't come. They, they said they wanted to, but when the time came, they were scared to because Absolutely. they were scared to because they were afraid of backlash and people labeling them as racist, mm -hmm. you know, um, bigots, you know, and and. And that's why the other students did not attend today, because they don't want to get targeted, you know? And I, I, I want to applaud you three for coming in, you know, and, you know, showing how you feel and speaking your mind about this and not worrying about what other people have to say. I mean, that's, that's, that's great. I mean, that's... It's definitely scary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, some of my friends, they, they agree with what we're doing and they want to be here, but they don't feel like they can because they don't want, they're afraid of being labeled as racist. And like you said, it's, they're afraid of backlash and their peers like shunning them. It's yeah, like, and there was, one, there was one point, I remember this, there was a scenario this year at school, I was, voice, I was talking with another student about his political opinion and they were like, what? what? Like, why do you believe that? And they went to a teacher, and I was like, don't go to a teacher, don't go to a teacher, like, in, like, being scared, like, oh, like, they're gonna think that I'm a racist now because I just said that, like, oh no, I can't think that now. And I, I was, I was, I remember that feeling, I was like, no, don't ask the teacher, don't ask the teacher, that was, like, I said, yeah, because I, yeah, I remember I made a point, and then they were like, that's completely racist and stuff, and they, they went, they were gonna go to a teacher, but I remember that feeling, like, oh no, like, I have that teacher. That teacher is gonna like, could possibly like have like a, um, like what's the word? Like, uh, could have like a, it's yeah. like oh that kid thinks this, and uh, I'm not gonna treat him the same as other kids. Like, it's that's like I had that feeling. Like I was scared, and I feel like a lot of other students at our school feel that. And yeah, I guess that's why we're here is to tell you guys that. I, I could get data, and I will if if it's forced to, but. I actually went around last week instead of working and I took it upon myself in a friendly manner to as many people as I could walk up to and, and get their opinion just to educate myself um, and I was blown away so I went up to as many black people as I could and every single one said they were disgusted and maybe it's a coincidence, maybe I just went on the wrong side of the tracks that day, I don't know, but they all were working class people, they had family and kids, most of them, to be honest, because they were young, they were just getting in school. Um, I think one or two did not have kids, but uh, they all worked, because that was one of the questions I had, do, do you work, do you, you know, this and that, and they were all against it, and they said that it was going to start a war. Um, you know, Isabel's up on with us at home, and, and I really appreciate that. She definitely keeps us in the, in the loop, even sometimes when she doesn't want to. You know, <laughs> it, but, but, but she does. Um, there, there was a, she came home the other night, and she was telling me about a student and I, that ended up telling her, you know, that um, 
white people don't know what we feel like. They don't. They, they don't. Um, they don't. Experience. They don't experience racism. And and that that blew my mind. You know, myself. I grew up in Southern California. I was born in Los Angeles, and you know, raised in Los Angeles and in San Diego, to where I was minority. You know, like myself, I've never experienced an area to where I was surrounded by mostly Caucasians. I was always a minority. And myself, I, I was picked on because of the color of my skin. You know, I was picked on, you know, because I was white. Um, you know, I, I've been jumped because of the color of my skin, called you effing white boy, you know. Um, you know, making fun of how white my legs are, you know. So, I mean, there, there's, it, it, it's not just the white, it's not just Caucasians, man. They're, they're racist. I mean, there's racism in everybody. Um, it, 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 but it just, that just tells me, you know, that, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they don't believe that, you know, whites or other, you know, races, you know, Deal with that racial tension, but we actually do. I don't know if you guys have ever felt racial tension towards you. I, I have, and it sucks. And and I totally understand, you know, where, where people are coming from with it, but it's not just one race that's feeling it. You know, and that's where these kids come up with a good point, you know, all lives matter. And, and, they, and it really does, you know, instead of dividing, you know, with just one political, not political group, but you know, just one group, you know, why not unite? Everybody unite, you know, so we could be stronger, you know, come together and work things out. I mean, that, that I know that sounds like more of like a perfect world, you know, and it almost seems like, you know, it's out of reach, man, but you never know, 20, 30, 40 years from now, we could get to that point. You know, why not start now? Why not try to get started now? Everybody unite. I just want to make one more last point. And there was like there was a counter we had a counter there was a counter protest out there and one of the students was holding up an all out we uh, an all lives matter sign and when he went back down to middle school he was told that he can't have that sign because he was white and fat. I heard that as well. Yeah. And that people that from that group said that they couldn't believe that he even made it out there because he was so fat. Yes, and I was also told that from a BLAM uh, member that I can't join the BLAM uh, group because I was white. Because you're white. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's I feel that's my last point. But I thought that's what many many more was. What are we? Yep. This is just the beginning, and before any of this happened, like I said, my kid, my you know, kid is definitely not a perfect child. No one is. Artist. Um, but you can, my, my words are you can take my child out of this whole equation and take all the other kids. Mm -hmm. This is just the beginning. This is the icing on the cake here. This is not Montpelier School. There's way too many different people in this community. And I can only hope for the safety of everybody. So it's, uh, there's a lot of pissed off people. I agree. I have a comment. Um, my name is Jennifer Micah. I'm a resident of East Montpelier, and I also sub at E32 on occasion. Um, and I wanted to say, um, first I want to say you guys are really brave um, for coming here. I know that it's really, really hard. And I would agree, um, I am in support of the Black Lives Matter flag, and um, I'm generally a liberal person. Uh, but I will say this, that uh, I think that teachers here at U32 are not well um, educated on how to handle these really difficult discussions. My kids come home with similar comments to what you're hearing here today, and my kids are pretty liberal. And they come in and they say, these kids were trying to have a conversation in class and everybody came and jumped on them. They said, how, you're acting just like you know, the people you criticize are acting. And so I think that this goes to the need, when you talk about the issue of having a diversity policy, I think before you have any kind of policy, you need to think about putting some money into educating teachers, giving them the skills that they need so that they can handle these conversations. A lot of teachers don't know how to hold students safely in such a heated argument. 
Because that's what it, be, it becomes an argument. There's huge discussions going on about patriotism, about the lives of black people in America, about the history of racism, about the reverse racism. All of that is going on right now. And um, we're asking teachers to go into these classrooms where there are these emotions. And with, with um, you know, the, the president that we have, whether you like him or you don't, I think it's undisputed that it's created a lot of problems in our society. The difference of opinion about the policies that are um, being enacted. And it started with Obama, really, because people weren't happy with Obama. So we have this long period of time when people are really angry. And I really hope that instead of spending your time on creating a policy right now, really think about whether you can find money so that you can help the teachers. So you can hold the teachers so that they can, in turn, hold their classrooms safely so that people can, in fact, be heard. That's what I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you, for coming. It's really important for us to hear all sides of issues and to hear from a diverse group of people. We only know what we hear and comes here, and I really appreciate you. It does take a lot of courage, um, and I appreciate especially the students to come. So thank you very much. And know that we're working really hard on this issue, and we want everyone to feel safe, and we want everyone to understand and be educated about how to handle difficult situations and how to treat everybody so they feel respected and equal. And we're working really hard on that. So thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So, so classrooms to me, from what I remember, just this is. You know what? Time. I'm gonna. Oh, yeah. we've, we've done a half an hour of yeah, public it's, comment. It's not about political discussion. So, in classrooms. um. I'm just, I'm going to stop it there just because we have a full agenda and okay. we've already been sitting in meetings for two and a half hours. Okay. okay. Thank you. So the consent agenda to approve the minutes of um, May 23rd, is there a motion to do that? So moved. Scott, in a second. Second. Carl, any comments or changes? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm fine. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much. Discussion agenda. Board retreat. Because we didn't. I heard Matthew say tonight he actually wanted us to adopt those three goals. Tonight. Right. I think that I, would be part of this. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's not actually on here, but I think we can. Can, can we add that? that? Yeah, I think we can add that. Um, so the, the idea was that after the retreat in August that the um, full board has, that the U32 board could meet even that same day and work on more goals if we needed more goals or decide that we only need those three. And I kind of have mixed feelings about sitting through a meeting all day and then doing a meeting <laughs> personally. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I was trying to go over what he said. Um, I think that we're in agreement on those three goals. We've talked they're about They're really well defined, times, too. And they're well defined. Um, and I don't know whether people have other goals that we want to discuss and knock around or not. And whether we need to wait until August 2nd to do that or whether we could say that we have those three goals and we want to meet as a board to see if we have other goals. I'm just well, kind of throwing those ideas I would suggest out. that we have a fourth goal, probably, in, in, in this diversity and equity mm -hmm. matter. And I'm not sure exactly what that goal is, but I think we're going to be spending a fair amount of time focused on that. And so do we need a retreat in order to have a conversation and flesh that out better? and kind of flush out the work plan for the year? I, I think, I don't know. Especially because I can't make it on a second. Well, I, I have a hard time thinking that I'm going to sit from yeah, eight right. to three. Right. It's not going to be a healthy yeah. afterwards, I agree. Yeah. Is there were anything different? Okay. So, and we want, a, and we want a date for our board retreat when everyone can be there, because that's really important. <laughs> Is there any reason we can't adopt these three goals? 
teachers and add a force down the road. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, and I guess, but I, and I guess my question is, Carl, do we want a board retreat in order to flesh out a fourth goal? If there's a way not to have another retreat, I would right. vote for that. Mm -hmm. I would do. Or advocate that we at least explore. So, if, <laughs> anyway. so what if Zuhari and I try to figure out a goal yeah. that we can present, to, and we're not actually not meeting again until August? Right. Is it legitimate to do as like a Google Doc that we could share? Right. I mean, no. That would be a meeting. No. That's a meeting. <laughs> Is Sorry. the answer to that? <laughs> those rules, a roving meeting. Not that fun. Yeah, that but Carl, Carl um, Kari and I could come up with a goal. We can work, two of us can work on it together. Yep. And then at our next board meeting, present it as the fourth goal for discussion. And if we agree to do it, we can just add it. And when is our next meeting? Is it early August? Well, we haven't decided. We can decide that. It, sometimes, you, you decide that. Yeah, sometimes it's the first, week, the first mm -hmm. Wednesday in August, and sometimes we wait till the third Wednesday in August. Okay. Um, and I don't think about, that, about two months from now. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think it really matters whether you know, whether we do the goal the first week or the third week in August. Yeah. It has made sense to do it closer to the start of school, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the third. Yeah, and we're, we're here. 90% we're of Vermonters leave yeah, the I first two weeks of August. Yeah. <laughs> they go to Maine. <laughs> they all go to Maine. <laughs> so I'm hearing that we could develop a goal, we could present it at a board meeting as a discussion item, and we could put it on the action agenda also if we weren't ready to vote on it, we didn't. And if we were, we could. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a plan? I think so. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, so I'm going to put on the action agenda to adopt the three, um, excuse me, full board goals. Can we do that without it being there? I'm um, not sure. You would need to, as a board, actually amend your agenda. Yeah. I mean, it's a, but since it's an action item, it's supposed to be warned. I think that so why don't we just wait and do all four of them together? It doesn't make any difference. Sure. Uh, yeah. Let's do it right. I don't think Matthew will be too disappointed with us. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. We, well, it didn't get on our action agenda. Okay. So. You would have to hold a meeting to hold you. That's <laughs> right. Okay. Before we go to the next topic, I, yeah. I just wanted to relay there have been about three or four different public comments that came in via email. And I feel like you should at least say what they are. And do you want to do that now or do you want to do it later? Are they are they to a particular topic? Are they to the diversity? Well, there was Ben, ben Hines's uh, letter that today was about. No, I, are there I didn't get that. Are there others that weren't around? I haven't read that. That came today. When did it come? It came later this afternoon. Okay, or so I haven't even seen that one. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, and that's that's speaks to yeah. the what we're just about to talk about. Um, Jennifer actually, and I, yeah. I guess I just received this. So you didn't send this to the board, but um, there was a question about um, cell phone use policy, and and. Uh, Request. Um, I know about if there's not a, I don't, I'm not aware of a cell phone policy. Is there a procedure for cell phones? There's the, the handbook um, outlines some of the cell phone. There's not a, and, and Jody can probably speak even a little more specifically, cell phone policy in the handbook. Um, uh, it's up to individual teachers. Yeah, it's how it's written into the handbook. Is it individual teachers? Unless it's middle school. In middle school, we, we don't allow cell phones during the day or at lunch. Yeah. You know, those kinds of times. And do you have a sense of the, if that's been problematic in classrooms? Um, well, in, if we say that do students always follow the rules of their classroom? <laughs> <laughs> um, then, I mean, you know, the teachers, the teachers have to report to us if there's a problem with it in their classroom. It's not something that we, we seek out. Um, and from time to time, there's an issue. I have sought out middle school phones during lunch, though. Yeah. Sometimes you get a pile. Yeah. So, you know, we prefer, and we tell them that we prefer that they speak to each other. And actually, our incidents of bullying and harassment in the middle school went down considerably when we would not allow them to have their cell phones during lunch mm -hmm. um, because they don't have that time to actually Snapchat each other and do all those things that 
amp up the uh, the discussion. Is that a new? No, no, it's been around. Proceed, whatever you would call it. I, it's three I, or four years old. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't around when I was in middle school. It was <laughs> three years the old. Day. I didn't hear what she said. Well, Jennifer's May comment. I, to May I speak to the, the point? About cell phones? Cell phones, what I was at, looking for. Did, did, did this letter go to Stephen? I have not received. Jennifer sent me a comment, or a question, really. I, I, asked, I just asked if there was any, dis before I raised it as an issue, I sent it to Carly to ask if there were discussions about cell phone policy. We, have, we do not have a cell phone policy. We have not discussed it. And my gut reaction is that it's more a rule than a board policy. Yeah. That's my gut. Um, I would say that's how administration is viewed, it, is that it's not a policy decision, but a, a school procedure. rule and yeah. procedure. But it could be a policy decision if somebody, if you decided to make it that. There's nothing I, I, I have to say that as an elected official, <laughs> I don't really see it as my role to tell somebody what to do with their phone. Um, I do see it as a staff you know, the administration and staff at the school needing to establish a rule to manage funds if there are problems in the school. Our guiding, but I don't see it as a policy level. Our guiding principle is kind of to look at the mission and the policies, and as a board to keep our discussions on that level. Right, but I mean that's that's throughout the whole nation, right? That's what most school boards do. It's what they're supposed to right. do. Right, but there are lots of schools that in fact have implemented cell phone policies. So I don't think that it is beyond the scope of what you could do. That I'm just going to rate. That's as far as I, I need to go on it. But I think that it is, cell phones are, I think, are a problem at U32. The, yeah, they um, may be. I think I think we're of the mind that that that's a staff level. It, and if you we haven't if, really talked about it, if you have a problem input. with cell phones, I would suggest you talk to the administration first. Yeah. Okay, and see where you get with the administration. Because that is definitely their jurisdiction as opposed mm -hmm. to ours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so really quickly, there was an email today from Don McConnell to all of us about this is definitely staff level about um, her daughter being denied lunch um, because of her balance or something like that. Uh, they, I just want to say it came to us, but I um, I, I don't know if it's appropriate for us to respond or. Just, I, I, I got the email as you well, but, as but well. I haven't been able to, I, I, I got it later in the day, yeah. so I have not been able to, to, uh, yeah. okay. if, so you're, you're if, if so you're the emails, aware of it, if the emails go to Stephen, I don't feel like we have to respond, if I feel it's, like it's information, it's, level, yeah. it's okay. an information thing, Good. Um, and I usually check in with him, yeah, I just, to see, we, we haven't had an opportunity to to, to and check it out yet, Fine. but we, we, did, oh, we did receive it. Yeah. And then the last one is uh, Michelle uh, McFadden asked me. You're very popular. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> and uh, asked me to follow up on the science request, and uh, I explained to her what we discussed last time, that the chemistry classes are full. Uh, and that the solution that's being developed is, an, is a new science class with sort of applied principles with some additional rigor. Um, and me, Michelle seemed to think that it may come to a vote. And what, the way I responded was, we don't view this as a, as a board level decision, or I don't think we intend to vote. So, good. Thank you. Thanks. How long do you guys want to stay? Do you want to do your report first? I, I can stay till the end. I, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, I have. I'm not competing with Kari, of course, but there are a couple of. Oh, I'm other, sorry. No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's quite all right. Excuse me, please. Um, oh, I don't know. I need to hear all individual. I don't know. I'm not. This is <laughs> this is kind of new. Have we always shared kind of individual board? Um, if it doesn't go to the whole board. I, no. Always. It depends. I mean, it depends on the subject matter yeah. and whether it's appropriate to the board. I've certainly, on the Doty board, often gotten a phone call that was clearly meant to be shared with the rest of the board. And or I not. do so when yeah. that happens. 
So do you think this one's meant to um, be shared with the rest of the I board? I think so. Um, it was from Cindy Gardner Morse in Callis, and she's concerned. She tutors a number of, um, of students, including um, some special ed students here, uh, including among them at least one senior. And she's concerned that the, um, the support that they're getting, particularly towards the end of the year, is not um, is not uh, as much as it needs to be in order, particularly for the senior to complete all the work necessary for the She reached out to Kelly Bushy, maybe today or yesterday, and mm -hmm. Kelly has tried to get back to her, and they haven't connected. Okay. So Kelly is responding to right. her. I yeah. Kelly just told me that this evening. Thanks. I and, and, and just as a point of clarification, if the board, any board member receives a request like that, we, if, if we're not aware of that, right. do you, it would, I, and I'm asking this kind of as a point of, uh, is the board feel like they should or could uh, forward that to us? Yeah. Um, yes. I, have, yeah. I have always done that. Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. always sent So, it so I would say that some of these, like yeah. I, I don't know of these issues, and there's nothing I can do if I don't know. No, of right. course. Yeah. And, and if I could forward phone calls, I would do so. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I just, oh, I no, thought no. you said it was an email. I, I'm sorry. I, did. Yeah. I thought you said it was Just this afternoon, actually. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So do you guys want to stay through this diversity discussion, or do you want to do your report first? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do your report just in case it goes too long, sure. or? Well, because one of the things on our report is a good like pre-diversity discussion thing, I guess. Do you want to? Yeah. Sure. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah, and, then, sure. and then if you yeah. need, sometimes these go, and it's already late. So I'm yeah. just trying to respect your time. Okay. Um, so we have some like less important things to talk about, but our most important thing okay. is. Um, Sort of, there's just been a lot of discussion about the Black Lives Matter flag at our school. Last week we had um, a bunch of facilitated callbacks with members of BLAM about like racism in our school, what the flag meant to them, and um, they were pretty well attended. And I think sort of BLAM had the idea to get this flag up as like a conversation starter, and I think that's really been working because we've had a lot of com like important conversations. Um, but that. Well, there was, I mean, it kind of goes both ways, because there's been a lot of important conversations about race, but there's also a lot of people who feel like the, like when they're talking about the flag as, you know, as a part of this conversation about, you know, diversity, that maybe the decision was made before everyone could weigh in. So for some of the things last week, like I said, were really productive and really good. Uh, but when talking about the flag, a lot of people felt like, like, why are we talking about it if it's happening and we can't do anything about it? You know, like, it, it's sort of, the discussions, at least within the school, have happened mostly after um, it had already been decided to raise the flag. Um, so there's concern around that. And I also think that, um, sort of, I know we're not really supposed to, like, talk about the public comment, but I was going to share this anyway, which is that a lot of kids against the flag feel like they can't share their opinions like sometimes they are but I was in a class a couple of days ago and we were talking about the flag and one kid said he said I don't feel okay sharing my opinion because everybody's just going to shut me down so like it's it's a very polarizing issue um, among the student body I guess yeah. and then on like a less heavy note we have some other things <laughs> <laughs> so um, Thank you very yeah. much yeah. for sharing that. Yeah. I know it's not easy, and it, it's just really important for us to get as much as we can, mm -hmm. as much information. So on a lighter note. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the boys track team won the championships. Wow. They won six times around. <laughs> <laughs> With enthusiasm. <laughs> um, and then both the boys and girls across team are going to the championships on okay. Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. So they've been making announcements. They really want everybody there. <laughs> Which one's Friday? The girls? The, the boys. 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 Yes. Harwood. Harwood's graduating Saturday. I wondered about that. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> also on Friday, no, I'm just gonna go. 
On Friday, we have um, some spring day, which is pretty exciting. It's getting a boost this year, I guess you could say. So it's basically like the high school version of field day. So it's at the end of the day, and we're all going to go outside and like play all these games. We got some bouncy stuff going on, <laughs> some games and ice cream. <laughs> yeah, there's like invisible old jousting. So are you taking us to our school on Friday morning to your school? That's what we're doing Friday morning. Oh, really? <laughs> and ice cream in the afternoon. Ice cream and yeah, stuff. and then you share this. Yeah, and um, so my last day of school was Friday, um, and then we're going just. I mean, in the senior week, award ceremony Sunday, SCOP Monday, Unity Day Tuesday, and then senior trip and then graduation. So it's, you know, explain what SCOP is. Oh, Senior Community Outreach Project, right? Yes. Right. And so all the seniors, like they do every year, are going um, out into the community to help people to, you know, sort of give back before graduation. <laughs> Organized by student council, of course. Of course. That's kind of our report, though. Thank you very yeah. much. Where's the senior trip this year? We're going to, let's see, we're going to New York because we're going to go to the Great Escape and we'll stay overnight and go whitewater rafting the next day. It's getting bigger and bigger. How oh, fun. <laughs> so, and just our eighth grade is in DC right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Right. And just a note, Shannon, you can spread this. Okay. Seniors need to behave on that trip yes, because no. we do not want any seniors no. in here at five o'clock on the day of graduation pleading to graduate because they've done something that, that they should. Happened? Yes, <laughs> yes, it, it really has, and it is. We, we save five o'clock every year. It, and it, Just it's in really case. heart wrenching, and I, I'm, you know, I'm saying it in jest, but I'm yeah. really serious that. Yeah. You know, kids just need to behave themselves. Yeah. Have a great time, but just follow the rules. That's the beginning of my speech when we do our graduation <laughs> rehearsal <laughs> <laughs> on that first day before they head off to do all of that. Oh, and you know, you can came from me. Yep. We we sit here and <laughs> we sit here and ag but we sit here and agonize whether kids can walk in graduation because of something stupid, literally stupid, that they have done on a school trip. And it, you know, because it's right before graduation, it jeopardizes your walking. Or, yeah. <laughs> yep. So the anyway. good news is that we haven't had to have that meeting the last two years. I know. That's, so, true. That's great. So we want to keep our record going. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, I want to really thank you, Shannon, for participating in the school board and being here. Yeah. It's really yes. important for us yes. to hear your voice. And and we will miss you, but I'm sure we, there's somebody in the pipeline. You may have actually seen seat. one of them. <laughs> Did you do a presentation the other day? <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys all set? Okay, thanks. So, diversity, inclusion, and equity belief statements. So last week, two weeks ago, maybe it was two weeks ago, Kari and Scott drafted a proposed statement that we looked at. We had a few tweaks to it, so Kari, they, yeah. so they have. We have an updated version with not very many changes. Not so Just, much. Yeah, I kind of underlined there are a couple words added and a couple things. Um, and the hope is today that we can adopt this as a statement of beliefs for the school board, um, and from it will come lots of education, lots of training, lots of discussions so that every kid feels safe, feels included, feels welcomed in this school, and understands how other people feel and how their actions impact other people. And that's a huge education piece that our country has not figured out yet. And we're just one little island here trying to help our students here. And I don't know if you want to add any more. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not sure where to start this conversation. It's already started, right? It's, yeah. it's been going on for weeks. But um, I guess when I'm, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about tonight was what was our intent in making this decision? And that's what this is about, right? This is we're trying to explain yeah. our intent. These are our values. That, this is where we're coming from. Um, we we can next get into what didn't we know? What didn't we anticipate? What was our decision making process? These are these are legitimate 
criticisms of, of how our board is, is active, or at least worthy of discussion. But on this, I feel more confident, more solid. Like, this is, these are our beliefs, and um, I, I, we seem to be pretty well aligned. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to sort of mimic that and say I was, I was in my kitchen last night reading my email or something, and I, I was sort of looking at the, at the policy and thinking about the flag and stuff this week. And, um, I just said out loud to my wife across the, the kitchen space, I said something about, you know, we kind of stumbled into it, but this, the, this, this, the, this belief statement really, to me, strikes me as the, the strongest core of all this. This is really where we're codifying our beliefs and making it a piece of the school community. And, to, and I, I, I was just talking out loud about where the kids, I said, this really may be more important than putting up the flag. I feel like this is more important than putting up the flag, is codifying this direction for the community. And immediately from upstairs, an outspoken teenager cried out, but, uh, how can you say that this is more important than what you're doing is more important than the flag and blah, blah, blah. And it took 25 minutes of conversation in my kitchen to rein that situation in and have everybody understand. I was like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I wasn't saying that we were more important than this flag or blah, 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 blah. I was like, <laughs> and, yeah. It is a touchy, it's a really touchy subject. And I do, I think that this, that this belief statement is, I think we've sort of stumbled into, however it really lands, somehow codifying the importance of inclusion and equity within the school is, 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 is the real core of what we're doing here. And I think it says that all lives matter. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's yeah. the bottom line yeah. of this, is that all lives matter. The first three bullets are all, start with all. All yeah. lives matter. <clears throat> that's offensive. That's offensive to raise the Black Lives Matter flag and then say all lives matter. That's the whole point of the Black Lives Matter flag. If you have a burning house, that's the house that matters. All houses matter, but the burning one is the one that needs your attention. And when you start saying all lives matter, that is code. And if you don't realize that, then all this diversity stuff you're doing is for naught. And I would answer that that's why the flag is for right. Absolutely. Because we realized that there was a we section of our population that wasn't feeling this way. We recognize and that, that we're, burning house. That we but recognize. you just said all lives matter, as if black <clears throat> lives matter, but all lives matter. And, and that, that is the crux of the whole issue. And that's the same <clears throat> conversation I had in my kitchen last night. It, this is um, what's both great and slightly terrifying about all of this is how much energy is being released out of this um, out of this sequence of events and discussions. And um, I, for me, what the the connection is that it's only possible for all lives to matter if, as a as a condition, Black Lives Matter since those are the lives that have had it the roughest for the past 400 years. And the, just sort of, it's not words, it's actions that, that ultimately matter. Um, <laughs> all actions matter. Um, the, the difficulty, and what I think is, what's really good about the belief statement is that it does provide a framework, I hope, for the administration to be able to contain all that energy that's being released. I mean, how are, um, how are you feeling about how this is going? Do you feel like you kind of have it, or so every now and then it's slipping out of your... So, um, so you've asked. Um, it was a rushed decision. Um, for our administration to be able to handle. We're exhausted. So the one conversation that, um, that Carl had with his child is multiplied by the number of kids that are in the building. Um, I, and, and faculty. And, um, and so if we, if we rewind 
into some of uh, in some of the things that we need to do as a school. Um, you know, I have to point. Jennifer is exactly right. Um, our teachers aren't well equipped to have these kinds of discussions. Um, that's cultural. That's um, because we're in central Vermont. Um, there are a lot of things that um, our staff has not experienced um, that they need to be trained on. The good points, right? We have a foundation of advisory. We have a foundation of restorative practice. Um, we now have um, a board who is aware that this is something that is um, at the policy level almost in terms of importance of, of what we do. Um, and, and now there's a higher level of accountability for what we do as a school. Um, we have so many layers of this. You heard the first layer is just the raw emotion that we face around this from students who feel um, that these hallways were not safe for them because of the color of their skin. Um, you've heard that. You've heard that we have other students who don't understand because the, the, the issue of race is also taken up by the issue of class. It's taken up by the issue of gender. And, and all of these things intersect in ways that are unique for each and every individual within our building. And so for us as a school, we have to learn how to have those conversations around each one of those areas and, and how to support the student who finds themselves in all three categories. To find the student who finds themselves in one category and can't understand why someone in another category might be, um, might be shown a different um, approach to, to solving their problems. And so, I mean, I wish I, I wish I could say that there's an answer to this, but we've, we've opened up the door mm -hmm. appropriately to the discussions. We are not good at the discussions. We are, we are two months into it, um, and we are learning from our mistakes. We're, we're learning from the students. And um, I would just point out, too, is that we don't need to contain it. This isn't a containment issue. Right. And I know that you're not choosing your words, yeah. but it's not a containment issue. This is an empowerment issue. Right. And we've started with the group of students who, um, who feel the least um, supported within our community. And if we go by the, the idea that when we build those students up and when we provide them with a safe space, that we begin to create a safe space for other students as a result. And, and when we acknowledge that we have racism and that we have cultural um, incompetency within our students and bias within our programs, the students are right. We don't read enough books from authors that are not white male, Correct. right? We are not using examples of African American uh, scientists when we talk about you know, what's gone on in our world. These are all things that will take time um, to build a curriculum, to build an instructional base, and to build um, a common culture that lifts all of our kids up. And by putting up the Black Lives Matter flag, we, we've said that we recognize that this is an issue and that this is something that we have to deal with. And we have to deal with now. Like, it's not, it's not something that we can put off. It's not something that we can say that we'll get to. And it's not something that we can say that we want to dilute by trying to include all lives matter or all issues at one time. We have to, you know, we, we have a, a capacity to deal with things that's limited. And, and right now we're, we're at capacity and the discussions are going to continue. Well, I mean, we're, we're just not good at it yet. Like this is and this is this is what education is about, right? We start at a level of not being very good at something, yep. and we grow towards being good at it. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, we have to deal with it from the not good standpoint right now of being able to deal with this.
I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> provision. <laughs> well, we're not provision. Well, I, I really appreciate that. That was, that was well said. Thank you. And I want to say that I know I feel bad, and I suspect we all do to some degree, with the rapidity at which the administration and staff have been called on to step up to this in this particular circumstance. At the same time, it needs to be dealt with sooner than later. It's not something we can wait to do. The conversation just needs to start. And, and, I, and, and I think it would be nice, I would say, I think it would be nice if you could convey to the administration, the administrative staff and the teaching staff and everybody, that we, the board, appreciate the trouble that they're up against, but how hard it is to move this forward. Yeah, we call it digital. The difficulties and the abruptness that it seems with which this has come up. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, does this group or some configuration of, of this group have a faculty, advisor, or um, you, the two of you. We're generally the two people that this group of students has sought out mm -hmm. to hold their discussions with. Okay. And we've sat in on some of the discussions that were part of the, the discussions that happened during callback last week. We, we were with some of these students to, to be supportive of them and their attempts to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And what about the Krista and, was it Adrian who were here? Mm -hmm. Are they faculty advisors? Uh, Krista is the faculty advisor to the Blam students. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what you meant to? Yeah, yeah. 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 And she was at, she was, she's been at at least two or three mm -hmm. of the meetings yes. with the students. I mean, our, we're planning for, you know, this is the time where we begin to plan for next year. Um, you know, it's, as soon as we graduate kids, the next day we turn around and we start looking at what we're going to do in August when uh, teachers arrive and, um, and how do we, you know, our trainings around restorative practice for our new faculty, our trainings that we're going to do in our opening in-service, what are we going to do throughout our Wednesdays next year? This is one of the you know, building a culturally competent uh, staff is part of that plan now. You know, I mean, it's, it's got to be a part of it. Some of the students that were not here that were kind of um, talked about came last week, and they wanted to start a, a group, and basically they wanted anti-bullying. They, they they're like, we don't want it to be any specific group of kids. We just want anti-bullying. Mm -hmm. So great, start it. <laughs> so, so it's part of really, it's also getting the message out that we're gonna, we support you to do the things that are good, that are yeah. gonna help the community. Yeah, that's, that's great, because a lot of times, um, some of the, <clears throat> I mean, when you mentioned class before, Stephen, classism is, is, it is another big issue that doesn't really get much dealt with. But um, <clears throat> there, are, there are certain families uh, or affinity groups that just withdraw from political action, political activism, which is a loss to all of us. And it's much better if you know they're they're engaged and you know they develop the skills to um, to have a kind of constructive debate and be and participation. And, and, people that and, I, and I would caution: they don't necessarily pull back. I mean, when we talk about issues of class <laughs> and race, and I'm not trying to challenge you, Scott, but no, I do have to challenge our thinking along this, yeah. is that these aren't families that necessarily pull back because they don't want to be involved. These are families that are working two and three jobs yeah. and don't have childcare and don't have a solid place to live or they have food insecurities. Mm -hmm. This is not their venue. Mm -hmm. when, when all of those things exist, this is not what's important. Right. What's important is whether or not their child is getting fed. What is important right. is whether or not they're able to pay their rent. Right. Yeah. And so, so we, we, you know, we have to be careful not to discount the inaction of, right. of, of a family simply because of um, they're not here, right? Because they may not be capable of being here. Right now, we're also focused on are they welcome here? Right, and that's the, uh, the that's the issue. I think that's first and foremost right now is that we have to make sure that people are welcome yes. to, to be right. in our school and and that they feel that they have value, right. and that's the that's the work that we have to do. Yeah. Can, can I just add something too that 
that uh, just reflecting on all of this, you know, what's what's really <clears throat> to me so <clears throat> incredibly discouraging about nationally what's happening and what comes out of the mouths of our leaders, uh, it, it almost provides license for people to be increase, increasingly more uncivil and indecent and awful. And I think that spreads and is spreading, unfortunately, around the country. And I think it's spreading here, too, to some degree. I mean, kids are kids. Kids are always going to pick on each other. When does that not happen, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah. so that's a given. But, but it's changing a little bit now. I just, the sense that I have, just looking, I mean, you know, we can name the examples of, of leaders at many levels of government um, that it's almost free license to just be awful. And then you combine social media and the ease with which people can throw darts at each other. And thus, we don't allow that in middle school. That's good, uh, cell phones. So, you know, it's really, to me, it really, uh, and, I, and I know you guys are working on this, I'm just saying it anyways, but th this whole aspect of civility and decency and listening, being able to listen to somebody that you really don't agree with, just to keep your mouth shut and listen to them and think before you, it's so important and it's something that I feel like our country is really starting to, to have a serious problem with at every level and it's just awful, you know? So, I mean, that's my, that's my view of, of a lot of this, the kind of the big picture of right. it is civility, decency, acceptance. So I think the word that I would also throw in there is empathy. Yeah. Empathy is the core of what we need to develop both in our students and ourselves and our society. Um, I can't fix all of society. Sure. I can only work on it here right. in the school. <laughs> Okay. Um, but uh, but there is a, there's a deep and driving desire to build empathy. And this is a discussion that has already started in the cores, um, the teachers in the cores in the middle school as to how do we develop that? How do we create that kind of space? I'll say that the admin team, so, so our administrative team has been reading a book called Better Conversations, um, which is built around that same idea. And it's because we realize that if we're going to be engaged in this work, at this level, we need to have all the tools that we can for it. And so, so these are, you know, there's small pockets of it right now. They're not big enough. Right. You know, they're, they're just, you know, we're barely getting a, a foothold. But we're, we're trying to expand that and, and start working on that with our teachers, <coughs> working on it with our students. Um, you know, this is, <laughs> we're, we're going to, this is a conversation topic that's going to be on the table for, for years, years to come. Right. And, and it's not a bad thing. It's just right now. It's a very exhausting thing, um, and so um, so I think that we, you know, the end of the school year. Um, there's a lot of anxiety around the end of the school year that is added into this right now, and so once we get some fresh summer rest and are able to come back, I think we're going to be able to develop some better ways to work with our students and, and to create those spaces for conversation. And I just want to reiterate what Scott said that I think as a board we really appreciate what we threw you into. Um, and, and you know, maybe we didn't know at the time. We said this is opening up the discussion. This is it was kind of the opposite of Montpelier. They'd spent two years and that was the culmination. And for us, this was kind of the beginning and it was getting everybody aware. And I don't know, you know, we jump started it. If we hadn't done this, maybe this conversation would have taken years to percolate to the surface. Um, so I really appreciate all the effort you put into it and kind of the learning and stumbling right. along don't the way. Don't hear that we begrudge it. Please and, don't yeah, hear that. No, I, I don't hear yeah. that at all, but yeah. I do know the energy that it's taken um, and kind of the brain power that you've had to put to this. And I'm wondering where are we going right now? I'm looking can at the Can I just ask one more question before yeah. we do that? Um, and I, I echo what you just said. Um, uh, so one thing we, I didn't, or we, I don't think we anticipated, was any kind of safety concern. Um, and I know law enforcement was here on Monday, and we heard some things in the comments tonight that were, you know, we heard the word war. So do you have safety concerns about the flag being up for um, the rest of the school year? 
Do I have concerns? No, like on you, I guess. No, there's there's no there's no immediate threat. We did not receive, you know. So in our conversations with Montpelier High School, their threats were very real and very um, and, and very clear. Um, we have not faced those kinds of threats. We we most of what we have experienced are students who don't feel safe. Um, and express concern, but we have not had direct threats that have been given against the school. Um, but we, we also appreciate that our law enforcement, you know, was available and here for us. And, and in particular, I would say that also know our kids, you know. So um, I would say that, you know, we had one of the sheriff's deputies here who is a, a regular member of law enforcement who knows our kids and can be a, a, a few. That's, that's very helpful. Um, and, and it's a difficult thing. Law enforcement has a very different view around the Black Lives Matter flag. And so, um, so I think that you know, we, these are continuous conversations that we have to have. And, and this is the difficulty in the, kind of the navigating this world is, is, is very difficult, but doable. So where are we headed with this? Do you have an answer? I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay. I think we know where we're headed with it. Tonight, I'm talking about. Well, and, and, that's, and that's sort of where I want to speak to you. I think, I mean, we've, we've been through this draft. Um, I don't know if Jonathan was. That wasn't at the last meeting. I did, I did read it. Are, you have read it? Yeah. And do you have any, uh, any ch ch personal challenges with it? Well, there was. Can you stand behind it? I was. Uh, thinking about one, and I don't remember if it's like the third or fourth. I don't remember, I don't remember reading glasses. I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, All students have the right to an education free of bias and discrimination based on their education. No, it wasn't that one. I think Our it might have been the. Our schools must be committed to honoring students and staff diversity in all, all its forms. That's the fourth one. I think it's the third one. I'm sorry. We don't have to read the whole thing, but there, there was something well, that's about... That's the one I was just reading. Oh, okay. All students have the right to an education free of bias and discrimination based on their identity. We recognize that bias comes in many forms, explicit and implicit, historical and contemporary. Yeah, no, and that's we good. changed that a little bit. Oh, we we added, <laughs> yeah. Well, we added in discrimination. Right. No, I think that's good. Yeah, that's good. There, it, there was there was one line. Was it feel? We want students to feel. Where is that? Feel, feel. We want students to feel safe or feel. All of our students should be valued and feel they belong. Is those feel safe? Yeah, I mean, I, I might just say that you know all students belong, or maybe may more affirmative rather than you know. I don't know. That that was my sense. Is that all students are valued? All students are whatever. The, Semantics, perhaps, but yeah, and I think we may, we had discussed the the language around explicit, implicit, historical, contemporary, and how to make that easier for people to read. So, um, I, think so I think there's some wordsmithing still to be done, but I think if we as a board feel that this goes in the direction we're hoping to take this conversation, and we feel that it would be valuable to let the community and the other school boards. I mean, I think we've, we've discussed the fact that that we might like to see this adopted across the supervisory I mean, if it, if that if that works. Um, and I think maybe we're where we need to be now. Without you know, maybe but we've been sort of rushed at the beginning, and I'm feeling like maybe really crafting this and getting input of others. If, if it's going to be adopted without supervisory, I mean, we're, we're probably going to get some input from others who, who have feelings about it. And perhaps we just want to leave it where it is now until we have an opportunity to get that input and have the larger conversation about it. I like where it is now. I, I, think, I, I think that it's, it's easy reading, easy understanding. It's very clear. Um, and I, I, I feel comfortable with how it reads. I have just the first statement. Um, maybe this is looking at it as a glass half empty, but all of our students, staff, and other stakeholders make a positive contribution to our community. That's not true. 
can, but they can make a positive contribution bring, based on your own individual's experiences and backgrounds. I mean, some of your individual experiences and backgrounds are horrific, and you therefore don't make a positive contribution, but you can. So all of our, I would just insert the word can and make a positive right. contribution, because otherwise I think it's a little too candy land. <laughs> Rose colored glasses. No, I think, I think or it's, it's I mean, you want, it's what you're aspiring to do. Okay. Thank you for what you said. You I'm have, you you have more said more. it at the full board meeting. But I, what I wanted to say about the policy is something that I just shared at the executive committee is that it should just stay still in the draft format. And, and we don't have a policy at all. No, I know. So stay, I, I know that you're working on it. So mm -hmm. We aren't. We haven't even begun, you know. Yeah. This so is the first step. Keep, keep work, working on it, on, on it and you get involved in the same work that the staff will get involved in. As full, so um, unless we have had the bias training and maybe do a partnership with Montpelier trying to create that policy together, I think it's, in, it's, uh, it's just fair to the students and the, and the staff to uh, go through the you know, like uh, address our own bias, you know, do the training, do, like do the work with them before you draft the policy. Before, that, we, that is before just, we carve it into stone. Before you carve it into stone. Yeah. That's my only, Thanks. you know. That's. And I'm noticing that there's no adoption on our agenda anyway. So everybody, we're kind of, we'll sit with it, mull it over the summer, come back to it. We'll think about August. our goal. We'll think about a goal. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, for the a goal for the board, which probably should come before a policy discussion. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Part this of is the goal can be to create the policy. Yeah. 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 This is hard. There. This is really hard work, <laughs> yeah. and I appreciate people's input and thoughts. Um, yeah, and if people have wordsmithing or some substantial, yeah. please send them along. Yeah. You know, and take the summer to percolate. Yeah. Great. So can I echo Kari here for just a second and just ask you also to think about um, when you use the word accountable in your last bullet, what does that look like to the board? Right? If you're yeah, gonna we hold talk, if you're gonna that last time. Yeah, if you're gonna hold us accountable, let's just be clear about what those things are that you want to hold us accountable yeah. to. Yeah. Well that's where policy comes in, exactly. right? That's, right. that's why I say I'm echoing. It's one thing to have uh, candy land statements about <laughs> right. Exactly. But it's another but thing I, to say, thou shalt do this. Yeah. <laughs> you want to work here. Yeah, yeah. yeah and we that definitely that was good. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm something very mundane and probably <laughs> <laughs> one of our goals was to um, try and fill out board observation forms as we go to events and do things just as part of the monitoring piece of the school to get a board perspective and the and I'm as guilty as I know the rest of you are sort of filling this out when we go to school events yeah. um, what we notice in terms of the learning outcomes we're not evaluating how it is but do we see evidence that transferable okay. skills yeah. are being used thank you so much Shannon Good luck. <laughs> See you at graduation. Oh, yeah. We'll give it to you through board. I know. We'll give it to you through board. So. You get it in a bigger audience than this. <laughs> Thank you very much. As long as you show up. And it's just kind of a piece of the monitoring that the board does, a third yeah. sort of piece. And I know it's hard. You guys that have students here come to events all the time. And do a bad job. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I'm just guilty. We were doing a good job for a while, and we're not doing it. But at least to think about when you go to events, mm -hmm. put your board hat on for a few minutes, take your parent hat off. And <laughs> it's trying to this exist electronically that we can like snag in the moment? Because I don't. Um, well, we should each have a copy of our We computer. It can't be a Google Doc, but we can send you a copy of it. It's just then, a Word version. Yeah. yeah. We do, there is a Word version somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just thinking that we maybe could just put up a Word version on the website. So that yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So, yeah, yeah, like, I'm, so I meant something and I could pull it up? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, wow, it started to do that <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Uh, yeah.
right. and then when you fill these out, that's what? We pass them in? Well, they're supposed they to come to me. Okay. And I will have a little envelope here with ones from last year. We just haven't done much this year. But we haven't. And when we were getting student performance presentations here, we were doing them right after the presentation. That was and that was really effective. Um, and then it, we had a quick conversation, which right. actually was really good. And we should have done that last month. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. We had the I didn't even know that was coming. Did, were you here for that? No, but, that, but we had musicians. Yes, but we, no, had, right. we had a presentation of an Algebra II STEM project that was just mind -blowing. pretty much really, mind-blowing. Really, yeah. really, yeah. really, really impressive. So then that would be the process. We would process them collectively after. Yes, if I had thought about it, I would have done that. I mean, yeah. sure have yes, to. and okay. we just sit here for five minutes, and you actually, in the best of all worlds, you kind of look at this as you're watching the presentation. Yep. And yes, I'm noticing that. Yes, I see evidence of that. Just jot down what it is. Um, and then we can talk about what we noticed. Yep. And then where would we go with that? Well, if we were doing it diligently and we had a whole lot of evidence, then we as a board could say, we're seeing that kids are, are um, what might be the, using their transferable skills. You know, we notice the transferable skills are being used in presentations, and we feel confident. We see evidence that kids are being taught those skills. <clears throat> to to complement test data and right. report it's, cards, and it's another it's piece of evidence of learning outcomes. I'm, I'm with you. My, my bigger question is, so then what, where do we go with that evidence? Is that just to satisfy? You know, I suppose if we were really good at it, it would be included in a monitoring report. I think so. You know, yeah. it would go to Bill as a piece of, yeah. here's, we're monitoring this kind of learning. That was it's a really true. good question. And We never really we, got that far. We are here. Yeah, yeah. 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 fill out the form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, then that, I put that on there because it was part of our board calendar, just to kind of check in. It's part of the monitoring. It's probably a part we didn't do as well. Um, reports to the board. Central Vermont Career Center. They had their last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Um, Bill, Bill has had a discussion with John right. Pendova, and hopefully that will improve. Student We Got Administration. Do you have any more to tell us? I did want to yeah. share something with you. Um, so we've been talking about having a guide to report cards and transcripts. We have a guide to report cards and transcripts that. that will be going out. Um, this hasn't been disseminated widely yet. So just, just letting you know. But so, uh, so our teachers haven't gotten a copy of this. We just got this the report card and transcripts that will be coming out primarily for 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th grade, because this is really around the, stand, uh, the standard space report card and um, transcript. And, um, and it tries to give a little bit of the background, but then um, this is the report card um, explanation with some information, and the back page is the transcript information. Will you send transcripts home to those kids also? Yes. Have yeah. you done that in the past? No. Transcripts okay. usually are not something right. that gets sent out very regularly, but that is a part of our reporting in the proficiency system because we want to see growth over time. And as you look at the as you look at the back page, um, the the left hand column that there will be there, there's three bubbles below that, but the left hand column are the courses and the scores that students get in courses. The right-hand side is their progress towards meeting our graduation proficiency. So the proficiency-based graduation requirement. Um, and so that's what their transcript is going to show in all of the SLOs. Right? So that's, that's the important thing. This is just an example of one SLO, um, the literacy. And so, um, so that, is, um, that is the guide. For that, there is still obviously a lot more to explain around proficiency-based learning, um, and so just I'm going to hold it up at a great distance so that you don't see it. Um, but there is uh, there is a guidebook that is coming out that is going to be more along the lines of proficiency, um, just showing and, and in a lay language, and shows the and I would highlight this little section right here, which is the actual pathway and what it looks like, and so it's very simple language around. You, um, you know, you begin in seventh grade, starting to develop a personalized learning plan, you know, and then in, 
as you move towards high school, you start to develop an interest in an area that you might want to study or a goal that you have towards college, career, military, trade, any of those kinds of things, and just tries to plot out some of that course in general and then some of the additional information so the transcript guide will still be in here to help people understand um, and it's just more information about what a proficiency based learning system looks like and what it is and this will be ready for um, our families as we return in the fall and so uh, so this will be provided to our teachers uh, by the time we come to in service and to our families um, as we get started in the new school year so that we just you know, these are the questions that keep being asked, and so we're trying to get more answers to them and more clear. So the clarity was really important. I can't say it anymore because I've said it too many times. <laughs> Working with someone else who is not familiar with it to help put this into a better language has been very helpful. Um, and it's cleared up some of the misconceptions and some of the things that are, that are hanging there for us. Um, it's also putting together this guide has helped us understand also some of the shortcomings in the way that we're using Infinite Campus in reporting the scores. And um, we're developing um, at our in-service next year, we're spending a full day around the grading reporting Infinite Campus um, use so that we can clean that up and have a common message across all teachers. And we feel like that's really important because that goes back to the goal of communicating with families. And if we can't get this right, this is going to be the downfall, right? And, and we don't want that to be what ruins of what we feel is a really good proficiency system and that we're building is not communicating well enough with our families. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. The, we felt like this was an important guy to get out immediately um, because we're putting out report cards and transcripts in another couple weeks. And so that's why we're kind of the order of how these things have, have occurred. When do you anticipate the other document? This document, we're shooting for the beginning of August. So, I mean, this is a pretty good draft at this point in time. But um, our goal is to have this ready for the beginning of August. And just so you know, some of the changes that have been made to these documents in their draft form have come out of my student group. So they've been looking at this stuff as it's been coming along. Um, our department heads, some of our teachers, we've been trying to share this as much as possible so that we get feedback from them um, to, to try to create messages that are, that are succinct. We, we also need to hit up some parents around this one. That's one of the next stages we just had to get to from the school year. And then we'll talk to some of our parents over the summer about, okay, does this make sense? Does it, is it helpful? Yeah. Can I make a brief comment about the Infinite Campus? Like, just really quick. My, I had an issue with my son's math class, and I was trying to figure out why he had the grades he had. And I went in, and I found that the entire month of um, May had not been reported by the teacher. But the interesting thing about that was not so much that it hadn't been reported. I talked to the math department, and there's something that teachers have to do that's easy to forget to do or to not do to get the grades entered. An entire month had gone by, and not one student or parent noticed, which said to me, people aren't looking at this in front of campus. It's way too confusing. It is. Absolutely agree with you on that and so there are ways that infinite campus has improved the product a lot in the last few months even um, and we are going to uh, we're going to show our teachers what parents see that's one thing that our teachers just are not they're not clear on and it's part it's of the training the teachers and this parents well the same thing. so so yeah it, it is but we're trying to get on ahead of our of, of that because the teachers have really used it for a grade book and not as a communication tool mm -hmm. So, so we're turning it to more of a communication tool because, as you're right, it's terrible layout the way it is right now. But that is being fixed, and we're going to try to clean it up even some more uh, um, before next year. We have to. Like, it's just not. It's not communicating what we needed to communicate. I have a question about graduation. You said Leslie was going to send us a schedule. Yeah, Leslie has been out a little bit, so um, yeah, she, so, I, I'll have her send it tomorrow. Just tell me what time the award ceremony is on Sunday. The award ceremony on Sunday is at three o'clock. Thank you. And yeah, okay. That's. I just last time you said that was coming, so I put that in my mind. And, I didn't. Then I, I forgot. Didn't realize yeah. that Leslie was going to be out for a few. It's minutes. okay. Um, finance committee. Oh, Adrian. Yes. I think um, seeing Jennifer here reminds me that we're, we're going to talk about flags under the 
administration report? Can we just leave that for right now? It's nine o'clock. Sure, I, I would and, just, yeah. I mean. I just, let's. I'll talk we, to Stephen and we can raise it at the next issue, the next meeting. If, if we feel like it's a board issue. Well, if Black Lives Matter is a board, board issue, then all flags are back before the most board we'll, issues. We'll talk about it. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, finance. There's a report in, yeah. the, in the larger packet. <clears throat> uh, we're doing well. Yeah. And you, I think there's a proposal to spend some money. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so we're going to put together a request to move um, a fair amount of that. So, so I know the board wants to keep a four percent cushion. Um, we have some pretty big expenses in capital coming up, and rather than, I mean, we think we've done really well in terms of building a capital budget, but we're going to need to transfer some of that money over to capital for things like track and parking lot and those big expenses that we that we're going to incur, so that we don't have to go borrow any money. Um, but I think that overall, the biggest part of our gains in our fund balance are because we underestimate the amount of money that we're going to take in for tuition. And so that's, so, so um, also along the lines with some spending, just areas of savings that we can do, but that accounts for a smaller fraction. The biggest gains that we have are around tuition, and that's why we have such a comfortable balance right now. And specifically, we're currently, our fund balance is at 7.4%, and, and our target is 4%, putting us about $490,000 over. I, and there's actually, Lori wanted me to let you know, it's actually only about 425 once we correct for a couple of other pieces that okay. are coming in here right at the end. Um, so that's <laughs> not to overspend ourselves, right? Yeah, okay. but, uh, but we are going to ask for some of that money to be transferred over to capital, a, a fair amount. Can you actually. do that in the fall? Yeah, well, you've yeah. got to close the books before yeah. we can actually ask that of you, and um, and so we're going to do that. Um, and I think also speaking back, you know, back to Jennifer's point earlier, um, some of the training we're going to ask that some of this money be applied towards some training um, for our teachers, um, and then also some interventions for our students as well. And so, so we, we do have some things that we'd like from there. Oh, and things like a steamer for the uh, kitchen because the one that was going bad is like thirty thousand dollar piece of equipment. So yeah, we just got one of the car. They're really expensive. <laughs> they're, they're really cool. They're super expensive. Actually, the, the interesting thing. I, I, I'm sorry to take the time, but uh, East Montpelier um, doesn't use theirs. They just got a new one when they had the renovation. So we're probably going to buy theirs off of them. Nice. So we at least keep the money in the district and um, do we go. <laughs> for some reason, they want to charge us full price. But we'll negotiate that. <laughs> and school start time subcommittee, do we need to hear any more than we know? No, I think you heard it all. Great. Explore the service. Yeah. So action agenda, we have a bunch of things to do. We got explanations for them in the full board meeting. The first one is to approve the blanket authorization for check orders for FY1819 in case we don't meet as a board. And we signed that passing around. Yeah, there's several yes. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, that we've already signed. Yeah. These are all signed. So is there a motion to approve the blanket authorization? I'll move it. Scott, and a second? Second. Questions about that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, and then, do I have to read this? Do you have the motion to, to award the revenue anticipation note? I don't think I Isn't there a motion I have to read somewhere? It's Probably. It may be in that packet. Yeah. Oh, I have. Yeah, I do have it. You Sorry. have it. Do you want to read it to us? Um, okay. To so to award revenue anticipation note bid to Community yeah. Bank NA for the time period of July 2nd, 2018 through June 28th, 2019 for the following amount and in interest rate $4,963.00. And seventy-five cents, and the interest rate is two point seven percent. Four thousand dollars doesn't sound right. Four million. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is four million. <laughs> 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 yeah. A couple of dozen. It's points. getting late here. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so, the, so the projected interest being one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And then there's an investment bid, so I'll let you catch up. An investment bid says to award the investment bid to Community Bank NA for the time period of July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019 for the following interest rate. And it says, oh, so this whole thing belongs to 32? Would that, like, um, where is it? Yeah. The, the investment bid's on page 9, yeah. In this big packet? I know I read it in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is just specific to us. Okay. Uh, cool. So there's several. Page nine. Nine. Yeah. So there's a summary of bid results on, yeah. on page nine. Yeah, there. I know I read it somewhere. Yeah. So a motion for the investment bid? So moved. Karen and a second? A second. Carl? Discussion about that one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Um, a motion to reserve $35,555 from technology. I assume that's coming from the fund balance? Yes, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's, it's technology funds that were not fully um, Expanded this year, but to be held over for next year for additional technology expenses. Generally, we've held it as part of the capital fund, but and so it's still held in that area. But it's have you moved? Well, when, right, I'm sorry, sorry. Keep, moved keep, that from capital to the its own fund. Yeah. Keep it in the technology. Yes. Right now. Yeah. Correct. I'm sorry. So I'll move. Did you get that motion? A motion to reserve $35,555 from the technology line of the budget, general budget this year to next year's budget. Correct. Is that? And Carl moved to the second. I'll second that. George? <laughs> Sorry. All, any discussion about that? I know it's getting late. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, and then we have a um, job nomination form for a work-based learning coordinator. And do you just want to quickly give us, So this sounded new to me. I didn't it's, it's actually not new. So Kim Keller has been working here as our internship coordinator. Um, she is, and that was a um, non-teacher position, um, but she now has her work-based learning coordinator teaching certificate that she received through peer or is receiving through peer review she hasn't gotten the actual paper but she's been approved um, and so we are moving her into the teacher um, category now so that she uh, she is actually we're, we're improving, moving her from part-time 0.5 to uh, non-teaching to 0.6 teaching this is an important position. Actually, any student who's in an internship or activity that is outside of the school, their program really has to be signed off by a work-based learning coordinator, somebody with this uh, certification. Um, that's why she's been working on it. We helped fund it so that we could have it, because if she, we don't have somebody on site, we have to contract with the um, career center um, where they have somebody with this um, to be able to do all of that work. So it's best that we have somebody in house because it's just so much easier for us to do. Um, I would suspect over time, given the multiple pathways that we have and the work that she does, that this will, position will be increased as we can increase it because her workload is pretty big. If you came to our mentor appreciation night, you saw a large bit of work that Kim McKellar does. All of those mentors generally come through her and the work that she does. Very and nice. so she is a great asset to our school. And I, I could go on for days about what a valuable part of our program this is. But she, uh, she certainly um, is a great part of our faculty. So is there a motion to accept her nomination? I'll move it. Scott, and a second? A second. Uh, Carl, discussion, questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Move back. Yeah. Approve the board orders. I have them here. Aye. Motion. Aye. This is, have you seen them? Yeah, I did. 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 Karen, a second. second. George, questions about them? 
or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Future agenda items. Um, should we decide on the third Wednesday in August for our next board meeting? I, I, As that's, opposed to that's the first you guys. Wednesday? I'm, I'm yeah. here. We, we have teachers back doing work by the sec, by the first Wednesday. You know what? I'm not going to be here the first Wednesday in August. I'm, well, I'm not either. Okay, so let's hear me. I'm going to be in the back. Is the first Wednesday in August the first? No, it's like right. the 7th um, no, like or 8th. The 2nd oh, no. is a Thursday. Oh, so the first is a Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Oh. I am well, here. No, <laughs> yeah, but we're going to have a whole We've got to retreat the we're next day. Let's brilliant. go. Let's do. So what's the third one? The third Wednesday is the 15th. Yeah. August 15th. That's early. Does that sound yep. doable for people? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wait. We'll be resting. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so August 15th. The bachelor. For the. Um, the the observations. <laughs> Come over and join us. Perfect. 14. I should be back. <laughs> it's a Wednesday. Okay. So we're all set on that. Um, I think we have plenty of agenda items. And we'll figure out after the 2nd or after the 15th whether we need a board retreat or not. Okay. And we'll go from that. Board communication. Maybe that's where all those emails should come in, in board communication. Oh. As opposed to board yeah. comments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just thinking about that. Um, Can I ask a communication question? Yeah. How many people got the newsletter this week? Parents. I think so. Okay. I don't think I got it. So I just sent it to you because I knew you probably didn't get it. Tried to send it to you and I don't know how to write Comcast. I have no right. email address Comcast. for George. And really? here you should have just got I it. I should have gotten it. <laughs> it's not showing up on here. I so have to go. Both of them. Okay. If you email me, that's fine. All right. Forward. Com yes. Adrian, can you just forward that to? I can do that. <laughs> I'll put it on my little list here. So they can see. That. Did that come like this afternoon? Uh, yesterday. Yes, there it is. I don't. I didn't get it. You. S I just sent it to you. That's what I mean. Here. Oh, right now. Okay. Right now. I haven't seen that. <laughs> no. Letter to Karen George. Just got it to you. Okay. And done that. I can do that. Mine says yesterday. The parents got it yesterday. Okay. Thank you very much. That was a long, hard meeting. We've been sitting for a long time. Oh, God. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. No running out of the parking lot anymore. Um, did everybody sign all these except for me? Okay. Thank you very much.